That's one of the ways in which emotions differ from compassion. Compassion is only about the suffering of another person. It's much more specific. Um, now I distinguish, distinguish familial compassion, which you don't have to learn. It's given. If you don't have it, you're an aberration. There's probably been some terrible damage done either to your brain or to you. But it's similar to an emotion in that it's involuntary. If you ask somebody, why did you try to rescue your child from being run over by the car? I remember doing that once with my daughter when she was about three, and she thought, the really, the way to get dad to do the most interesting things is run in front of cars. Well, he really does all kinds of interesting things <laughs> when you do that. Uh, but you asked me, why did you put your own life at risk to save your child's life? I'd say, well, I didn't think about it. I had to do it. There's no choice. Okay. If you ask me, why did I send money to the victims of the tsunami? That was a choice. Okay. It wasn't automatic. Um, I could have not done it. Most people didn't. But you live in a country where we have the highest percentage of people who take such actions regarding strangers, but it's nowhere near universal. It has to become universal if the planet's going to survive. So stranger compassion is not universal. It's focused just on one issue, which is suffering. That's another reason why it's not an emotion. I can be emotional about anything and am about almost anything. Uh, and a third way, stranger compassion or familial compassion differs uh, from emotions is that it's only constructive. Remember I just said earlier, emotions can be an act in constructive or destructive fashion. Not so. Stranger compassion is never destructive. It's always constructive. The intention in stranger compassion is always to prevent or relieve suffering of others, of strangers, of people you don't know and might never know and might never have face-to-face -face contact. Well, I haven't listed all the characteristics, but I think enough for you to get a sense of both what an emotion is and at the same time why compassion, at least stranger compassion, is not an emotion. If it was, we'd be in much better shape in this world, but it isn't. I distinguish familial compassion from stranger compassion from sentient compassion. Familial compassion is involuntary. It's built into the species. Uh, it's not just unique to humans. We see it in other primates. And it is directed towards the offspring, particularly in their helpless dependent phase. Human beings have a longer period of dependency, that is, they won't survive, they'll die, than any other animal on the planet. That's of great use in terms of learning things and different things for different environments. It's uh, terrible if you have bad parenting. But in any case, what is built in involuntarily is to try to relieve or prevent suffering in your offspring. Now, I just made an important difference. Relieving suffering is one kind of compassion that's more empathy-based. Preventing suffering. When I argued with my daughter, please, if you, I don't want you to ride a bicycle, but I can't stop you from doing that, but at least wear a helmet. She's not suffering at that point. I'm trying to prevent suffering. I would say most of the compassion that I and other parents show is preventive, not empathetic. We have the empathetic, of course. We act if there's an emergency to relieve that suffering. But a lot of what parenting involves, and again, it's built in, is more cognitively based preventive suffering to prevent your offspring from suffering. So it's very focused on the issue of suffering, but there's two, these two different types which will become important when we talk about how do we cultivate it. Now, stranger compassion is if you feel that way towards anybody. And there are a few human beings on the planet who without any special preparation or training have stranger compassion. I wish there were more. There aren't. There are some. Uh, people who spend their life working in Doctors Without Borders have preventive compassion. People who work in emergency rooms have empathetic compassion, at least some of them do. Uh, so they, they're there. 
They're just not the majority. What is sentient compassion? This is the Buddhist goal. Uh, Darwin also talked about it as the highest virtue, and that is to be concerned about the suffering of all species that have feelings. That's a lot. There are some people who have it. Most of the people, though, that I encounter who might seem to have it, have care more about dogs and cats or horses than they can do about people. Sentient compassion, it's equal for all sentient species. Uh, there are some living uh, animals that don't apparently have much in the way of feeling. Not many, though. You really reach down very far. Okay? That's my definition of compassion. And most scientists would agree with that. If we all have fear, anger, and joy, does that mean it is easy for us to feel for each other and have like sympathy and empathy? It means that we're capable of that. We're capable of cultivating an empathy for all people, but many of us, it's restricted to people who look like us, it may be even more restricted to our friends and neighbors and family. That's a lot of restriction. So I see as the goal is to extend that kind of empathy uh, to all human beings. We are all members of the same human family, and we need to extend our empathetic concern without being overwhelmed by it. Uh, I see in an hour of news on television more suffering than a human being ever saw in our ancestral environment. So you have to learn how to deal with suffering that you can't do anything about. 